Well, good afternoon, YouTube family. Grammy Nene is back. And in the kitchen tonight is a recipe that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, southern potato salad. Not German potato salad, but southern potato salad. So, and I don't know if that's what they call it, but that's what Grammy Nene's family calls it. So, um, we're going to cut up some potatoes and uh, get some potatoes boiling and cut up some vegetables. And I'm going to do a time lapse again because there's no sense in uh, you guys. I will stop it at inter interesting points and point out what I'm doing. Uh, and then at the end, I'll show you the measurements and how I put it together. And I'm uh, going to kind of show you how I let the eggs kind of ride along with the potatoes and stuff like that. But for right now, i got a lot of peeling to get done. In my other video where I made the sexy noodle get-together salads, pasta salad, I didn't say anything positive, and that's one of the things that I really want to do. So I'm going to start by telling you guys a funny story. My grandmother was raised on the farm. My mother's mom, which was Granny Thilbaugh, who is the one that I made the recipe in honor for her of the tuna patties. She told a story to us when we were kids, and we thought it was funny, and we would say, tell that story again, Granny. So I'm going to share it with you, because it's just a good-hearted story. Her mom's uncle would come over every Sunday to eat dinner. He didn't go to church, but he would come over to eat dinner. And so he would go out and sit by the barn and put the chair back to take a nap. And that was kind of his place away from the kids because on Sunday, between church time, kids who were usually farmhands also had a little break and were able to kind of play with their cousins and spend a little time together. So they were watching him, and he was sleeping, and they thought he was going to fall out of his chair. But the tail of the cow who was in the stall beside him, the milk cow, kept swatting him in the face. Well, he didn't like that. He was missing his Sunday afternoon nap after they had had dinner. And he wanted a nap. So my grandma says, my old granny, that's what I called her granny. She went into the, she said he got up and went into the barn, found some old rope and a board, and tied that old board and that rope to that cow's tail. Then he repositioned himself for a good old afternoon nap. Well, the cow's tail was twitching. And they thought, well, this cow's not going to be able to move that board. That's pretty heavy. About that time, the biggest horse fly you ever seen landed on the back of that cow and took a hunk out of him. And when it did, he swatted my grandma's uncle, great uncle, in the face so hard that he had a board mark across his face for two weeks. And it was a couple hours before he woke up. All right, I'm going to peel these potatoes and I'll be back. And I hope you enjoyed that story. That was always a funny story to us when we were kids. All righty, be right back. We're going to do time lapse. So as you can see, I peeled nine potatoes. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to the trash and I'm going to empty my potato peelings. Actually, I'm going to save these because these will be good mulch in my in my kitchen garden. So I'm going to put these in a bowl or in a bag. I'm going to take and put them in a plastic bag. You can take eggshells and potato peelings and peelings off of any kind of vegetable. Of course, I have a little rabbit that enjoys them. But you can save them and put them out there, and they make the best compost, and they fertilize. They fertilize that ground, and I'm getting ready to put some, uh, some garlic out there, and hopefully it'll do good. So we'll set that over there, and I can dump that out in a little while. Now what I'm going to do now, so I'll turn you down, is I'm going to cut these potatoes up. I'm cut them up into like little square, little, well... Rectangle squares, just little chunks of potatoes because I'm not going to make a creamy potato salad tonight, which I normally do. But I'm going to make a chunky potato salad. And 
And, rem and in my other video where I did the noodles, I mentioned this, this, uh, that was something that you could take to church for a Sunday dinner, to a family reunion, to a get together at a park. Uh, potato salad something else. Potato salad goes with so many things. It'll go with hot dogs and hamburgers. It'll go with roast. It'll go with uh, pork, full pork, um, anything. Spaghetti. I've had it with spaghetti. It's delicious with, with that. It doesn't matter. You can eat this with anything. It'll go with a pot of beans. It's just one of those meals. And a lot of my stuff I do semi-homemade. And what that means is I, I can make a banana pudding from home at, from scratch. And one of these days I'm going to do that. But when I do my banana pudding on, on the next uh, recipe video that I'm going to put out, it's going to be a boxed one. Because I have to make so much for, for so many people. So I want to show you how to make it simpler for you when you're having to do a giant one. We don't always have time for homemade. So let's get that in there. Like I said, we're just chunking these up. But I got a little secret to my potato salad, to my mashed potatoes, that makes them good. That makes them really good. And it's adding instant potatoes to them when they're hot. Um, when I make my uh, homemade mashed potatoes, I usually just boil one potato. I usually just take the water, boil one potato in there that adds that starchiness to it, and then I use instant potatoes, and then I whip it, and I put a lot of air in it. I'll have to make the potato mashed potatoes for you one night so you can see. We don't usually eat a lot of potatoes. We try to stay away from them. But this is a lot of cutting, but there's some people who don't know how to cut up a potato. I peeled the skin, and if you got any of these dark places like that on there, you just remove it, because you do forget it, but you just peel the potato. You just take the skin off, and you use a little paring knife, kind of like what I've got, and then you just chop them up, and then I've got, this is a pan that has a strainer in the lid, so I'll take them over to the sink in a few minutes, and we'll rinse them really good. Then we're going to put some salt in them, and we're going to put them on the stove, but... I thought I might let you see this part of it. Because there are some young people that don't know how to cut up a potato. They don't know. They buy frozen potatoes. And like I said, we live in a microwave society. Which is okay because we're all so busy. But sometimes you just want to slow down. And I tell you, cooking is, is it's a love. It's a love affair with cooking. If you love it, you love it. If you don't, you don't. And that's just the truth. I have uh, people in my family where the, the men cook because the men love to cook and the, and the women really don't, and that's not an issue. It works for their family. So if there's some young men out there that's watching me and you love to cook, you have a significant other, try some of these recipes on them. Or you got your eye on somebody, cook for them. Ain't nothing, they say that the way to a man's uh, heart is through his stomach. It's the same way for a woman. Okay, I'm back. No I've rinsed them. It took three rinses. And I just want to show you. Potatoes are grown underground, in case you didn't know. Most everybody knows that the potato is a root vegetable. And so they're really dirty when you cut them. And you'll have muddy water, so you have to see how pretty and clean that water is. I had to rinse them a full three times. And I put my hands in there like this, and I kind of wash them and agitate them. So I'm making sure I'm getting them good and clean. And you can see that water is really good and clean. Okay, so now what we're going to do, let me get a towel so to dry my hands off on my clothes. That's not a good thing. My mama will have a fit. Because I'm going to add, uh, I'm not going to add a fourth of a cup. My little measuring cups are in here. Let's add, I'm trying to give you guys measurements so you can follow me. Like I said, it's kind of different for Granny Nene because let's do one heaping tablespoon. Of the salt in there. Okay, so let's put this over here. Wash. Okay, now what I do, some people have their eggs boiled separately. I just rinse my eggs, they're clean, and I just kind of fit them down in the pan. And I 
For a big potato salad, I'm going to do five. Because I want to do, I might put another one in there at six. Because this is going to be a pretty good size potato salad. And it's got to be some people. And eggs. Let me rinse this egg. Eggs taste delicious. And potato salad is one of the things that make it. So, now I'm going to go take and put this on the stove over there. Okay. I'm back. And what, what I'm doing now is... My potatoes are done. And you can see over here they're fork tender. Let me grab a fork and I'll show you that they're fork tender. Now I'm going to show you a, a neat trick. And if y'all hear that TV, they're in the living room watching TV. We'll just ignore it. Okay, so. These are fork tender. You see that, they, that you can slice them with a fork. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get a bowl. Let me find me a good size bowl and a spoon, and I'm going to fish out these eggs. These are all large eggs. They're pretty good size eggs, so I'm going to put these in here. I hope you guys can hear me. So. The only thing about having a house with the living room right beside the kitchen. They're watching TV. But that's okay. It's a Friday night. They, they need to watch TV. Okay, so I got the eggs in here. So what we're going to do, we want these eggs to quit cooking. So I'm going to point you over towards the sink. You guys just go everywhere with me. Like I said, you getting calories because you're going all over this kitchen. When I'm going to go over here, then I'm going to put the cold water on. And I'm going to I'm going to rinse these eggs a couple of times until the water is not hot warm. And this is stopping that egg for cooking. And then I'm just going to let these eggs sit in this sink in cold water. Because that is going to make those eggs easier to peel. It's a secret. It's a secret. I don't know. It may not be a secret, but it's a secret that my family showed me how to peel eggs. Because whenever I was a little girl, my job was grating coleslaw and peeling eggs. I also made the lemon pies at the family get-togethers. But I had to do the grunt work that nobody else wanted to do. So I learned very quickly how to peel a hard-boiled egg. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a bowl. And so I think I'm going to take my potato salad in this bowl. I was going to make it in a metal pan. Doesn't, doesn't this say fall? Isn't this such a pretty bowl? My husband bought this, this bowl. It was a bowl set at Sam's. And so what we're going to do now, I'm going to turn you down here so you can see. We pull the bowl back. I make my, some people put their potatoes in there and then they add their stuff. I make everything in there before I add the potatoes to it. So, we're going to take our handy dandy spatula. And this is going to be a cup of mayonnaise. It's going to be a cup of mayonnaise in there. Okay? So, it's one cup. Trust me, it's a cup. Okay. So, I'll give you a good measurement on this. We're going to add my people like sweet potato salad they like sweet I mean, they like it sweet so this is a sweet pickle relish i could stand here and cut up sweet pickles till the cows come home but it's just a lot better to do it that way now how i get some of that good deal flavor in there i'm going to show you in a minute but there we go we got that now some mustard. This is a new thing of mustard. Wouldn't you know, I grabbed a new thing of mustard. Let's see if I can. I tell you what, they make these tamper proof and I try not to fuss about it because people was licking all over the groceries and stuff and make me happy that things are sealed. Because I find somebody licked all over my stuff, they gonna get a spanking. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna say I put about a third of a table, I mean a third of a cup of mustard in there. So, we have a cup of mayonnaise, a half a cup of relish, 
and a fourth of a cup of a third of a cup of mustard okay so now you can see I'm making a sauce I'm making a sauce in there I'm making a potato salad sauce I'm making a dressing that's a dressing so okay so we're mixing it so now I'm gonna add a little salt to it about a teaspoon you don't want to add too much to it because remember we already salted the potatoes when they were cooking so now, I forgot to grab the pepper out. We're going to add about a teaspoon of pepper. We don't need a lot of pepper. A lot of things going on in this. Okay. So now I'm going to take this spoon that I got the sweet pickles out of, and I'm going to taste it. It's pretty good. I was going to add a little dill pickle juice to it but it doesn't need it that mustard really is kicking in there you can taste that mustard so now what we gotta do is we're gonna add these potatoes in there now I like to add the potatoes in there warm some people say don't add potatoes to something whenever it's warm to the mayonnaise but I like to add them in there warm not steaming hot but warm and I'm gonna put them in there with a with a strainer spoon. So we're going to set these potatoes right here. And they're still pretty hot. They got a little steam coming off them, but they've been sitting for a while. I'm just going to add these in here. I don't mind a little liquid coming with the potatoes over here because that sauce is it's pretty thick. You can see it's steaming. They're hot. But they're not like boiling hot. They've been sitting for just a little while. You just don't want... But this is how I make it, and it, it it's just good. Now, I usually add a little bit of instant potatoes to this, and, I'm, and I may still do it. I want, a, I want a big, big, big bowl of this. I'm going to save this hot water because when I add the instant potatoes to it, I'll be right back. I forgot to grab them out of the cabinet. And they're going to be a butter flavored because that's what I got in the cabinet. And it doesn't hurt if they're butter, butter flavor, regular flavor. They'll just add a little bit more, um, more seasoning to this. Let me get my big spoon that's over here because that's a short handle and I need a, a good one. And we're going to start mixing them in. And we are going to need some water. That's why I got this water, this hot water. You want to use, you don't want to get rid of this starchy water. It is good. We're going to add it in there. And it's going to be like you have a creamy potato salad with a chunky potato salad. Yeah, we're going to need more. I'm going to go ahead and add that. It's kind of hard to measure it because, like I said, when you're sometimes when you're cooking, your environment controls how dry or how wet your stuff is. And you might like your potato salad a little drier. You might like it a little wetter. It's going to need the rest of this water. So I'm going to just put the rest of that water in there. Okay, maybe not all. There's a little bit more in there than what I thought. So... And we're going to mix it. And now it's coming together. It's starting to thicken up. And we'll have to taste it again because sometimes when you have all of it added together, it will need mayonnaise, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So now we're going to let me get me a clean spoon so I'm not double dipping in there with the spoon. Mmm. That's really good. It is going to need a little bit more stuff. It's going to need a it's going to need a little bit more stuff, but it is plenty creamy. You see that? So, bread and butter. It's lost some of the vinegariness with the water. So let's add that in there. 
I know this looks like it's crazy. But when you're making a potato salad, you are definitely doing it by flavor and by taste. You're stirring. You can even do a potato salad with nothing but strictly instant potatoes. You don't have to do go to the trouble of peeling, doing all of that stuff. But there's just something about having some fresh potatoes in there. But I like to add that instant potato in there because it makes it creamy. So let's taste it again. Let's see if that added what we needed. It did, but it's going to need some more mayonnaise. I'm just going to tell you. It's not, got, it's not got what it needs in there. It needs some more mayonnaise. Because once we add those eggs to it, and potato salad, like I said, is something that's by eye, by nose. Not everything can I do a complete measurement on. Because I just, this is just the way I cook. So let's put some more mayonnaise in there. Okay, I'm going to go through every spoon tasting. But you know, you got to make sure it's correct. So let's get that mayonnaise incorporated in there really good. Then I'm going to show you how to do the, the, that's good. That is good. That's exactly what you need there. You can taste the mustard. You can taste the mayonnaise. You can taste the pickle relish. It's creamy. I didn't have to do any whipping. We're going to set it over here. Now we're going to work on the eggs. We put a lid over the top of that. Okay, so that's done. And like I said, it was, I'm very sorry. It's hard to do a measurement on a potato salad that I'm used to doing that way, but I would say I put a cup and a half of mayonnaise. We know that we put a half a cup of sweet pickle relish. I probably added a fourth of a cup of pickle juice. And uh, one of the things that's missing is I haven't put my onion in there. So I will be cutting up a half a cup of purple onion and adding to that. That's one of the things that's missing. I haven't done that yet, but we will do that in a minute. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work on these eggs. I'm going to rinse them again and put some more cold water in there. And I'm going to bring my bowl over. I bring a bowl over, and I'm going to put you down here where you can see. I put, put them in fresh cold water because that water had gotten warm. Let's kind of move our stuff off. I have a mess. I'll have to clean it up in a minute, but right now we are having fun, like I said. And uh, one of the things I want to get out is that, because that's my secret. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to crack each one of these eggs, and they go back in the cold water. Make sure you get a good crack on them. These are foolproof eggs. And I really didn't pay attention to how long it took for my potatoes to get done. I just cooked them until they were fork tender. And usually the eggs, if they're pushed down real good, they're done too. So, okay. So, kind of roll them in your hands. You're loosening that shell. You're putting them back in that water. I'm going to go start back with the first one. Then we're going to go over here. And usually I just take the back of my thumb like this, and I just wrap it around that egg, and it just comes off like somebody taking off their Sunday coat. Look at that. And then I rinse it in that water, make sure it's filled, make sure there's no shells. And since this cup was cleaned, we didn't really do anything in that cup this time. I brought it over here in case I needed it. We'll put our eggs in there. Same thing with this one. We're going to start the egg over here. And I always have an extra bowl for the shells. And you take that back of your thumb. And it just peels off. Like a Sunday coat. Told you I was a professional egg peeler. See? And I mean, they will stick on you sometimes. Sometimes they're going to stick on you. But this is how you do it. This is how you do it. This is how you get in there and... Like I said, I was peeling eggs probably at a five or six year old. And we had lots of eggs because my grandma, she cooked probably for 50 to 60 people. And uh, 
I'd say 50 or 60 because she had she had five, six kids. Four that lived around her and they all had wives and kids. And then she had nieces and nephews that would come over and then my, uh, we even had family that was uh, kin to the aunts and married in aunts and uncles that would come. We never could have a big enough family. And uh, so she would make deviled eggs, potato salad. So and if you feel one that's kind of sticking, that one was kind of sticking so we didn't get the water in between it and the membrane. So you just put it back in the water and you go. There you go. I got it clean. That one fought me a little bit. But still, that's okay. Now I'm going to... I'm going to work this in a little bit better because I didn't I don't think I worked that one enough. But I learned how to peel eggs. God, I don't know how many dozen eggs. And then Easter time, we had real eggs that we hunted. Not these plastic eggs that the kids hunt now. We did real Easter egg hunting. And we ate the eggs. And so, as a little kid, you learn how to peel an egg just so you can eat it. So, all of these eggs are free. I don't feel any kind of shell on them. So we'll take this and put this over in the sink. Okay. Now, dry my hands. Drop some of this water where we peeled them. We need to bring our tater salad back over here. Like I said, I've got to cut an onion up and put it in there. Put that there. Let me put this bowl on this side. I'm trying to make sure I'm positioned. I have this cute little egg slicer that I found for 25 cents at a flea market. And uh, I use it to do eggs. What I do is usually the egg sits in there this way, but I start it this way first. Set it in there this way. I'll pull the egg slicer over. I'll slice the egg that way. I squeeze the egg together, lift it up, turn it sideways, and put it through the egg slicer again. And then I just kind of hold it over the top. And it goes in there and it's perfectly sliced. Let me show you. It's perfectly sliced. Or that potato salad and I just love it it saves time I mean it's easy to take an egg cut it put it in your hand and cut it in there but this is kind of a fun thing to do so I'll put it in there like that I hold it and I squeeze it then I turn it the right way then I hold it upside down and I put it in there so same thing with this I'm gonna do I'm going to leave two for the top of the potato salad so that we can make it pretty. And I'm just going to continue doing this and I'm going to cut up some onion and add to it. Then I'll come back and I'll come back and show you guys how to top off the top of that potato salad to make it beautiful for presentation. Okay? Granny Renee and I'll be right back. Well, hello. I'm back. And we've got just about got this potato salad done. I've added it in a cup of onion, diced red onion, because I always use red, I call it purple a lot of times, but red onion. Um, and uh, I'm just kind of stirring that in, as you can see. And I'm going to kind of clean these sides up and I'm going to kind of kind of smooth this down. the salad and I've got these two eggs right here and this time I'm going to do it just like this and that's going to make the most beautiful slices of egg to go on top of our potato salad and you use the egg to decorate and you're just going to kind of set them around let me kind of take it out so I can kind of pick them off Gonna kind of set those around, and I got one more because I like those eggs on the top of them. They're pretty, and I slice it again. And like I said, that's just one of my most favorite things that I found at a flea market. I think I gave a quarter for it, fifty cents a quarter, a dollar. I don't know, but it was well worth it. I would have probably paid a little bit more because when I'm doing Christmas and Thanksgiving and cookouts and stuff like that, sometimes I do a lot of different eggs. So, and so that's our, that's what it looks like, but we're going to add a little bit, 
Some people would put paprika. I add just a little bit of seasoning salt on the top of it. That's my orangey thing, just a little bit. That just kind of gives it something. Like I said, I have a family that's kind of sensitive to heat. Paprika can put off a little bit of spice, and I like it though, but a little bit of that so I get that color. And then we're going to put the lid on it. She's going to go in the refrigerator for tonight, and she's going to make, hopefully, some of our family very happy tomorrow. So, if you like this video, please subscribe because I'm going to do, be doing more and I'm going to be doing gardening and different things like that. And if you like this video, comment on the bottom and share it so your friends can see it. And uh, until next time, I'm Grammy Nene. You guys have a wonderful, blessed evening.